This is just a quick introduction to using a one-way analysis of variance using R. You can see in the upper left-hand pane, I've just listed what's in my data. I've already read in my data and I've attached it. And then I just said my data here. So it has scores for 15 individuals. And those 15 individuals were in groups, either A, B, or C. And if you enter this data in Excel, in fact, that A01 V. Let's see if I can find that if I have it. It just looks like this. You can see it just has score and group and then the numbers for scores and then in the next column group membership A, B, or C. Whenever you do a one-way analysis of variance, or for that matter a two-sample t-test, you should have two variables, one for the score, whatever the quantitative variable is, and the second one for a group or whatever your grouping or categorical variable is. So anyway, that's what the data looks like. I've read it in, and I'm just going to go ahead now and get a box plot. Now, box plot really doesn't make that much um, difference in this case because I only have five, or that doesn't have that much meaning in this case because I only have five for a group. But still, this is the graph that I would normally use, and normally I would have more data than that, so I'm just giving you the, just the prototype for, for doing these. And then I would go ahead and uh, make the box plot a little fancier for however you want to do it here. I guess I should have put three colors in there. Let's go with uh, sky blue in the uh, next one. So I have three colors there for groups A, B, and C. So first thing I've done is I visualize the data, in this case with the box plot. Of course, you can put titles and stuff on there and should. Then I'm going to get some sample statistics. I'm going to use the supply command. I'm going to get the score by a group and length, which is sample size. Then the same thing, but I'm going to get the mean. And then the same thing, but I'm going to get the uh, standard deviation. And there we go. I have three and five in each group. Means of 5.8. 12.8 and 10, and standard deviations of 4.09, 4.15, and 3.54. And I should, you want to organize those into a table for whatever presentation you, you make. Of course, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and get a couple more measures here. I think, generally speaking, it's probably a pretty good idea to get the median. And if you're going to get the median, you should get its measure of spread, which is the IQR, the mean and the standard deviation, the median and the IQR. And then you'll have those that you can and can, can also include in your report, the medians and the IQRs. Okay, so the main thing for this video was just to do an analysis of variance. So I'm going to create an object that I'm going to call Model 1, and then AOV, score, tilde, group. And that's just going, that's going to run it, and it's going to put in my environment that I have a Model 1. But to see it, you have to say Summary Model 1. And so now I have the basic ANOVA table for a one-way analysis of variance. The degrees of freedom for the treatment for the group is K minus 1, or 3 minus 1 is 2. And the degrees of freedom for the residuals, which is the Denominator is total sample size, that's 15 minus the K, the number of groups, that's 15 minus 3 is 12. Then I have the sums of squares, the means of squares, and the F test, and then a p-value, which in this case is less than a 0.05. So using traditional uh, hypothesis testing methods, you might consider that statistically significant. If you have a statistically significant difference, you should go on to do Tukey's honestly significant difference or some other approach to determining which specific pairs of means differ from one another. So I'll do that, and what I'm looking for here is, well, there are two things. I have the lower and upper limit for each pair. Now, these, aren't, these wouldn't be the same thing you would get with a two-sample t-test because it basically uses an average of all three in MSE when it's making the uh, confidence intervals. But we can say that B minus A, that B is somewhere between 0.36 and 13.64 higher than group A. 
and so that doesn't include zero, which says there's there is a significant difference. And you can see the p-value, the adjusted p-value is 0.04, and that is statistically significant. So c minus a, we go from minus two to ten, that includes zero. The p-value is greater than 0.05, so we can we can't conclude that we have a difference between c and a, and c and b, minus nine to plus four. That includes zero, so there might not be a difference. You can see also that the p-value is, is large. So we can't conclude that there's a difference between C and B. The only difference we can be confident is the difference between A and C. Now keep in mind that our sample size is only um, five per group. If the sample size were larger, a graph that looked like this might produce other differences besides the one that we have here. Okay, for an effect size, you should get a to squared, which is just the sum of squares treatment divided by sum of squares total. And here I've just written this out, kind of hard-coded it here. The sum of squares treatment was 124.1 in our model here. And the sum of squares total would just be the 124.1 plus 185.6. And so that'll give you the a to squared right there. And you can see over here it's 0 0.4007, about 0.4. So that means about 40% of the variation of scores from the mean score is accounted for by knowing which group you're in. There's Again, that's just kind of hard coding it in there. If you want to uh, use a, I think it's a, a function that'll do that, if you'll install and then call up the library LSR, there is an a, it includes a to squared in it. You have to give it the name of the model. I have model one. Type is equal to three. There are different types of sums of squares. Um, just use three. And ANOVA equals false will keep it from printing out the rest of the ANOVA table. And I'll show you in a minute what it would look like if that were true. And to be honest with you, it's kind of ugly. I'd rather keep my keep this table than I would the uh, one that comes out with the uh, LSR thing. But anyway, there it is. And you can see that a to squared is 0 0.4007. We're going to get the close to the same thing. It looks like there's some small rounding or some kind of error in there. Uh, but 4007 for sure. Uh, it gives you this divide. We're just looking at the a to squared. a to squared partial would be beyond this course. It's when you have more than one um, group in your model. So in other words, uh, we would, instead of having just group, we could also have gender or something else in there in our, in our model. And then the partials would be for each uh, fact that you had in. So as promised, here I put the same thing in there and ANOVA equal true, and you can decide whether or not you'd like for it to look like that. I'm not too crazy about putting in all the, in the, all the NAs and all of that, but anywhere. Anyway, there, there it is. Nova with R and R Studio.